Again, a portion of the Super Chats tonight will go to the Rollins family uh, to help with the uh, future baby expenses. But right That's now, let's go ahead. You, you bet. And let's get right into the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. All the news that you never want to know about drones. Let's head over to the drone newsroom with Jeff Sills. What's happening, buddy? Oh, my God. I want to talk about Canada like no further. But oh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. I, if I see another Canada uh, video, I'm going to freak. But uh, anyway, so we'll start it off and get it out of the way. Canada's new drone laws went into effect gen, uh, June 1st, and it's causing quite a, a stir in the drone community. Um, I, you know, we talked about this before. They incorporated uh, mandatory tests for basic licenses for hobbyists and advanced license for essentially what would be equivalent to our part 107. Um, and they've got some extremely steep fees, you know, or I guess not fees, but fines if you go and do something you really shouldn't be doing. But aside from that, most of the rules and regulations follow the same thing that we have here in the States. You know, don't fly over crowds, don't fly over, you know, forest fires, just, you know, stay away from people and cars and, you know, below 400 feet. I mean, it, it's fairly standard stuff. It's just the, I think the exam is what is getting everybody sort of freaked out. Yeah, you just, have, we, have we seen one before? Like, do we know like how theirs kind of compares to ours? Yeah, I got a chance. There, there were a couple of uh, presentations, uh, some videos of people that walked through the basic test, and I mean it. It has a lot of the similar questions that our Part 107 class has on it. You know, it has information about uh, reading the maps and understanding the aerody mm -hmm. aerodynamics of the drone and winds and reading METARs and stuff like that. So, I mean, for hobbyists, it is sort of a steep curve, mm -hmm. but it's definitely going to kind of drive away those people that uh, really just get a drone to be naughty with it, you know, mm -hmm. so... And someone will be made an example of. You, you can count on that. You know, very soon. <laughs> you know, they're gunning for somebody to. You know, yep. they're. It's kind of going. Go, go ahead. Go fly over people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Do a flight night. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. See. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you know why dare you? <laughs> so don't be made an example of, and use common sense. Of course, anywhere in the world, that that's should be the norm. All right. So next we have, uh, I guess, uh, some really spectacular video footage that came out of Canton, Texas. Um, the Weather Channel tweeted out a video of a tornado Whoa. that they were able to catch. Well, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, wow. this, is, this is some great footage. Um, and so this particular tornado uh, had, had gone through the Canton, Texas area. Um, basically, I, I think it hit a rural area. It didn't have any information showing that it, it had caused any like loss of life or anything. But the video footage itself is really spectacular. Would you fly your drone this close <coughs> to a tornado? It doesn't Sorry, look yeah. close. Yeah. I mean, either of you. It doesn't look close, I, but it... I kind of would. I think yeah. I would, too, but I think I might, too, <laughs> man. I think I might, too, oh, just to try it. That looks so awesome. Yeah. That's like 30 minutes away from me. That's right down the road. Yeah, it's dangerous, though, man. So dangerous. But you're Can right, you imagine, pretty cool, though, man. if you got that footage, when it just started getting drawn into the tornado. Right. Oh, yeah. oh that would have been awesome. Now, it, this does look like it might be in 720. So it, this might be just the feed. <laughs> A screen recording. Yeah, it could be that, you know. <laughs> but anyway. Wait, wait. It's... Can you play that last little bit one more time? Yeah. As, look at this. What is this thing getting chunked up over over here on the right? Yeah. What was that? I, I think that was a like a garden a shed or something. It could have been a cow. Yeah. Any Twister fans watching? Mm. Oh, that's such a good movie. That was a good movie. Yeah. Sorry, it's throwback. Oh, uh, James Edwards, thank you for the five-hour super chat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. So next in the news, Disneyland Resorts has opened up their Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, uh, which is their new, oh, I guess, cool. showcase. And uh, they released a video where they decided to do some drone footage and flying through the new Galaxy's Edge, and it. It really looks cool. They've essentially gone and duplicated. Uh, it reminds me of the spaceport on Tatooine from the first movie. You're starting to dork out a little bit there, Jeff. No. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's really cool the way they did this. Now, you know everybody in this is either a stunt person or involved in the shoot. Somewhere. You know, they didn't just send a drone in there while there's tourists. 
Oh, for sure. Yeah, these are yeah, actors. These are all paid extras. Yeah, yeah. Waivers signed. Right. Oh, yeah. And of course, you know, once they let the tourists in there, they'll be standing room only. So yeah, that's good. yeah, yeah. They it's, the cruise lines do the same thing. Look at this, all this spacious cruise liner we have, and then you're shoulder to shoulder with a bunch of strangers. Right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> let me fast forward this a little bit here. Look it's at that. Flying too. Ah, look at oh, that. That looks awesome. Yeah, man. And you know there'll be little kids hopping the fence trying to get in them. Is this Florida or California? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Galaxy's Edge is going to be... Wow, it doesn't say. Um, Drone this... meetup, guys. Drone meetup. Yeah, it'd be a great place to go. Yeah, if we could get permission, for sure, yeah. I'd walk. I'd walk through there. <laughs> it looks awesome. I'm not going to have a drone meetup and not fly the drone at the location. I'm just not. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, so next we have uh, in the news, the, if you guys remember, we did a story on this channel about the Aeromexico Boeing 737 that was supposedly hit by a drone. Um, well, our friend Ash uh, has a, I guess, a new take on that. Hi, I'm Ash and Droning On, and we now have conclusive facts that state very clearly that the impact with an aeroplane in Mexico was not caused by a drone. In December 2018, an Aero Mexico 737-800 collided with an object, or so it was said, whilst it was preparing to land in Mexico. The pilots heard a loud bang just as they were starting to descend, and when the aeroplane landed, they discovered severe damage to the front nose cone. At the time, there was no evidence of a bird strike or an impact with a drone, and yet as soon as the press and media heard about this story, they immediately stated that a drone was at cause. The press and media, when it comes to drones, just seem to have failed with their investigative reporting, and they just yeah. jump to conclusions and speculation. In order to provide full due diligence, they also even checked for evidence of a bird, feathers and DNA, and none was found. Now, this is not the first time that drones have been blamed for impacts with aircraft. In the past, we've had plastic bags, bats, birds, and even now, most recently, structural failure due to negligence blamed on drones. It's just not acceptable. Yeah, man, that's that's just wow. all kinds of wrong, man. Just don't don't keep blaming stuff on uh, on drones. Stop vilifying drones. Yeah, we're the scapegoats. Yeah. Um, all right, so next in the news, we have in Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, they've come up with a unique way of using drones to actually start fires. What? Firefighters to the north are working overtime trying to battle back flames from the Maroon Fire. That's burning near Flagstaff right now. They tell us lightning sparked the fire more than two weeks ago, but the flames are still only 10% contained. So far, it's burned more than 500 acres, and right now they have more than 100 firefighters working to put those flames out. Luckily, they're getting help from a new drone technology that they say this is the first time they've used it. It's specialized equipment, and it's been ordered and operated on an active wildfire. That's really cool because it used to be that firemen would actually have to create a fire break by mm -hmm. going there themselves. So that keeps the firefighters safe. Uh, if you'll just excuse me one moment. Hold the presses! We're getting a lot of super chats in for the baby. Let me just go ahead yes. and, and back things up here. It looks like uh, I missed one from... Uh, do I get James Edwards? Yes, thank you, James Edwards, so much. Uh, Wes Dunn, $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Robert uh, Cast Casto. Casto. Casto, congrats. Rollins Family High Can. Uh, $25 super chat. Wow. And uh, Simon Kakani. Kakane. Kakane. Cocaine. Kakane. 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 It's Kakane. <laughs> Twin hour super Smooth. chat. Thank Smooth. you. A little help for Chris's new edition with best wishes from the UK. Thank you so much, everyone. And once again, if you just joined us, a portion of tonight's super chats will go to help the new Rollins baby. Did you see this one? Do uh, you know County Joner? What's that? For your first bag oh. of diapers and a six pack of beer, you're going to need both. <laughs> there you go. Wow, 20 bucks. Thank you so much. Wise. Yeah, and uh, Anthony Benson. Much appreciated. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, everybody. And now back to the news. All right. So on May 22nd, uh, the Vancouver Fire Department was called out to put out a fire at a Northeast 125th Avenue house that was started by a battery from a drone. 
A Vancouver family watched in horror last Wednesday as flames filled their front room. A lot of memories here, and it's uh, it takes a lot to swallow when you walk in there. Um, but it's okay. Uh, my stepdad's out, and I'm out, and the dog is out, and my mom was at work, and that's all that matters. That morning, the homeowner Bill wow. Scheidler says he put his drone battery on the charger in the front room, and then went to the garage to work on a car. I smelled something. I thought maybe it was the neighbors burning something. Just before the fire started, his daughter was on the front porch. I was just like, somebody turn off your darn alarm. I didn't realize it was our fire alarm going off, and then all of a sudden I heard this big boom following. Clark County fire officials believe the lithium polymer battery likely exploded, starting the fire. Well, I've heard I've heard stories of oh, I'm catching on fire, nothing like this, but it's all too familiar for a drone store in Michigan. The owner shared mm. with us surveillance video of a drone battery exploding in their shop. Fire officials say never leave the batteries unattended when they're charging. Consider using a fire rated pouch or container. And if the battery is damaged, don't use it or charge it. I mean, I, I don't think I did anything out of the ordinary or uh, that should have caused a problem. But things happen, you know, so just be careful. Do be careful. You know, lithium batteries are no joke if you overcharge them or if they're damaged in any way. I know they're expensive, yeah. but if you crash and you get a, a, you know, look at them. If they're starting to puff, man, get rid of those things. Mm -hmm. get, it's, yeah. not, it's not worth having in your house. And get a lipo bag. Um, and dispose of them safely. Don't just throw absolutely. them in the trash. Yeah, don't just throw them <laughs> in the trash because then that's a fire for someone else. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know, you know, Jeff, I'm a fan of gallows humor. And not to dismiss their trouble or anything. And uh, here we go. No, no, no. Uh, I don't mean to be insensitive, but with that woman's voice. <laughs> Hello, have we had a problem with our house? You know, there's, <laughs> you know, there's a pack of cools in there somewhere. That's all I'm saying. So also be it careful that, when it you was smoke. That dang drone battery. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't me. It was the battery. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I apologize, smokers. There's people like, change it, change it. I'm not watching the stream anymore. Change it, change it. I'm sorry. I am sorry. And thank you for the super chats. They continue to roll in to help Chris and his baby. Uh, we got uh, Dennis W. Ten dollars super chat. This kid will be a YouTube star. Day one. You gonna have you gonna have your daughter on? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. wonderful. We look forward There's to seeing There's a whole lot of cute going on here. Uh, and I think that that would be a really good addition. You Chris, know? Chris, you know, What's from up, one good looking man to another, we can we there's a secret good looking man handshake and I'll have to That's teach right. it. That's right, we do have that. We do. I'll have to teach it to Jeff later if he's <laughs> lucky. But uh, you know, you know what I'm saying. Your kids are gonna be good looking. <laughs> Okay, so uh, you have, uh, I guess, been pining away, Ken, for DJI to release a new drone. And courtesy of Daniel Sampson, I found out this wonderful information recently. DJI has released a new drone. Yeah, and uh, none of us will get one. <laughs> yeah. This, Whoa. Yeah, this is the DJI Storm. It is uh... put out by the DJI Studios Custom Aerial Cinematography Service. Uh, uh... You can't buy it. You can only reserve it. And when it shows up, it comes with its own van and crew. Yeah. Ooh, at the cost of $10,000 a day, maybe? Oh, I would imagine it's a lot more than that. That's <laughs> I an mean. Aria Alexa. That's a $120,000 camera sitting on the bottom of that thing with a $16,000 lens. Can oh, and an $8,000 Ronin 2 gimbal controlling it. Can you imagine the, 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 the silly little YouTube videos I could make with no, nobody? That'd be such overkill, wouldn't it? Oh, my I mean, gosh. That is beautiful. It that, really, that's a, that is a beautiful setup. It, it is. I have not seen a total price on this thing, but estimates right now are running in the $150,000 range. Chris, could you uh, make some magic with that? Look at Chris's oh face. God. Chris is sorry. <laughs> I just saw my my face when you came back to me. It's like I realized Chris there's is... a little bit of drool. <laughs> remember, hey, remember that? Now you're not old enough, Chris, but uh, but me and Jeff are. Remember that look that we'd have when we looked in the Sears wish book. I, uh, I, hey, you don't I know the wish. You shut up. You don't know the wish book. You don't know yeah, the agony of like your parents. This thick. You don't know the agony of your parents saying you can only pick two things. Oh, I know that agony. 
1982. <laughs> 1982 over here. We had the wish book, and it was like when that came in, it might as well have been Christmas. Because like I, I flipped through the first 200 pages to get to the boys' toy section. Right, we had the right. girls' toy section. Right. Got through all the pink pages, and then I got to the boys' stuff. And I had every single airplane and every Lego kit dog-eared on that thing but within a day. Yeah, I, I bet uh, Jeff and I have one thing in common. We both... We're drooling and dreaming over an Atari 2600, weren't we? Absolutely, yes, we yeah. were. Yes, we were. <laughs> okay, you got me there. I was a Nintendo. <laughs> the first NES, that was what I had. Oh, the 2600, <laughs> man. All right, so next in the news, the FAA this week on Wednesday um, introduced certification to Amazon Prime Air. Oh, man. Um, they have now been certified to operate their MK-27 unmanned aircraft for package deliveries in the United States. We are living in the future! Jeff Bezos' future. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I... Can you imagine, like, say, you really, you really need those tube socks now, right? <laughs> How much will tube socks cost to, to send them on this thing? Well, it's going to be part of the Prime Air Service, and uh, the drone can fly up to 15 miles and can reach a, a target area in about 30 minutes. Um, as for what additional cost they would have to use a service, I'm not sure. I would imagine that part of the Prime Air, I guess, package or or whatever would probably cover the additional cost. Yeah, that's going to be great when they get it finally here in Tennessee. <laughs> Uh-oh, what happened? What happened to my tube socks? Did Jethro shoot down my tube socks? Jethro! <laughs> well, that's officially the second company in the United States that's got an FAA approval. Of course, Alphabet Wings was the first to get theirs for food delivery service. So uh, it is coming. You know, you know, they have to. Amazon will budget a certain number of downed drones from flying over trailer parks in Tennessee. Yeah. <laughs> you know they were like, oh man, get my gun. <laughs> I'm telling you, I live here. I know what it's like. <laughs> and that's not knocking, because I'll be right out there beep, 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 with them. I'll be like, Whoa, boom. you're not going to feel, I know they're filming me too. Anyway. <laughs> I would go out with a grapple hook, just so I could keep it. Just to... Oh yeah. You know they. <laughs> People will try to steal them too. Like, what are they? How do they? How do they deliver? Yeah, do do they land? No to me. Do they drop it? Parachute? Because people are gonna be like, oh, I forget the tube socks. I'll take this hundred thousand dollar drone. Good day. Well, yeah. like on their on their first like beta uh, videos that they did what a few years ago, uh, all the homes that they had had a Amazon certified landing pad that the drone was calibrated to go to. Does that make oh, sense? Oh yeah. And then, because like now, I mean, like my house has trees across the front. If you just come to the address, that could be anywhere on my property. You right. know, it's like they've got there's so many variables with power yeah. lines and trees. It, I mean, th there's so much that goes into it that how are they going to be able to do that door to door? Right. Not only you that, have this thing on your roof that they go to. Right. Not only that, if you are one of these certified homes with a landing pad or whatever, and a drone goes missing, you're going to be the yeah. first suspect. Gonna, yeah. You know, the Amazon well, police are going to come out and check it, you out. Yeah, and as bad as porch pirates are, if you're leaving that out by the, the, the by the street. Oh, you know, worse. you know, people will develop other drones to intercept these things and and take them. Yeah, I, I think it's just a publicity stunt for now until the skies are filled with pizza drones and other things, taxis and everything. That won't be in my lifetime. Maybe yours, Chris. You're going to live a little longer than I am. Maybe my child. Yeah, yeah. Well, going on the vein of the of Tennessee people shooting at drones. Um, <laughs> in, 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 Wells Fargo, North, in Wells Fargo, North Dakota, a man has a warning for you because after his doorbell uh, camera caught a drone flying around on his porch. The man tells me this all happened near Westside Elementary just after four on Sunday morning. While he and his family were still inside his home, fast asleep. Take a look at your screen. You can see the lights of the drone in the right hand side of the video as the drone flies around the man's patio and windows. The man says what? he always keeps a close eye on what his camera captures, adding when he watched Sunday's incident for the first time, it gave him the creeps. 
The man says he made a report with West Fargo police who told him that flying drones around homes might be a new way for thieves to see if your house is worth breaking into. Oh, yeah, I hadn't considered that. I mean, that's not to be an, an alarmist or anything, but sure, you know, criminals at case places, they, they don't have to sneak around the property anymore. They can just send in the drone. Not, not yeah. to be a naysayer, but that was a invisible drone with <laughs> lights. Yeah, it did kind of look ghostly, what didn't it? What the heck was that? <laughs> well, I mean, oh, like yeah. the lights were here and here, and there was literally no mass in the middle of you it. You know what? Is it? it was probably Kelly Green's dead GoPro Karma ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Creeping around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, the next one we have is from the Natural History Museum in Utah. Um, this they, is amazing. Yeah, they've got, a, a, I guess, a custom-made drone that they use to do an intricate flight through the dinosaur skeletons. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah, this was done with a completely customized drone uh, that was based off of, like, a racing drone. But they had a GoPro 6 that they mm -hmm. actually ripped the case off of the six to keep it small enough to be able to fit through all of those spaces. Mm. So they, they just left the guts on there. Well, that's yeah, a good yeah, idea, man. The guts on there. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah, this is a good idea. Fascinating. All right. And uh, Ken, since you like to share Johnny FPV with me. Johnny FPV? <laughs> I love Johnny FPV, man! Oh, yeah! This is awesome! Oh, I love it! Is this Johnny FPV? It looks like the kind of stuff that he would do. Oh, I'm gonna lose my mind! Ah, oh, this is so great! One day I'm gonna learn how to do this. Yes! <laughs> Smoke! Smoke him if Don't. you got him! Oh Don't my god! Hold on, man! Let me enjoy this! This is awesome! Ah, oh, nobody can fly like that! That is insane! That's oh, oh, what? <laughs> what? 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 Ha what happened there, Jeff? Uh, that particular pilot, which was not Johnny, Johnny FPV, oh. crashed his drone into the side of a car during the Polish Drift champion Championship. Mm. Oh, well, that's that no good. What not to do <laughs> with a camera <laughs> drone and when, a race car. Uh, th that's crazy. Like, d d does he... Uh, I feel I feel bad for him, because that was an awesome shot until it wasn't. It really was, yeah. Yeah. I hope he got permission and wasn't just out there doing that. I have no idea. This yeah. was a, this was a drift championship, so I would imagine he would probably be sponsored to be on the course. Speaking of FPV, I'll tell you, in just a couple minutes, we're going to be speaking with uh, Vigo Koch and Matthias Allring. They're standing by in Sweden. I believe it's like 2.30 a.m. there or something. So we're going we're gonna to yeah. call you guys here in a second. Uh, Vigo is... Just he's 21 years old and he's just an amazing FPV pilot. We've got some footage from him that we'll share. But first, Jeff, before you go, I'm going to share this story with you from Robert Green. He, oh, okay. He, without realizing it, stole my idea. And I might have told you about my idea. Um, I was going to take my phantom controller and go hang out at the hospital and pretend that I'm landing like a, a hospital drone, a, a, a real helicopter. I must have told you about that, didn't I? Anyway, uh, Robert Green did that very same thing. And uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, because it's really funny. Here, check, check this out. This is Robert Green's video. So you probably didn't know this, but uh, the Mavic controller actually will... Uh It'll control a multitude of different aircraft. Right now, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working on a tower, replacing some antennas. <laughs> so, uh, you know, hang on a second. I'm, try I'm trying to maneuver this out. And you'll notice I'm, I'm doing the pinch method here because it's real precision flying on this. So I'm going to be real precise here with these controls. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to take that real tall antenna off there on the right. And yeah, remember, remember the Ken Heron pinch mode is what we want to do here. All right, there we go. All right, so it's up. Okay, got it loose. All right, so got to make sure we're clear. Hey, he's flying out real good. Yeah. All right, we're gonna back us up just slowly. And uh, all right, so they, so the ground crew's got it. I'm just gonna hover here for a second while I disconnect. 
<laughs> now remember, remember the Ken Heron pinch mode is what we want to do here and, and do this. So uh, yeah, so your, your Mavic controller, see if you can link up and, 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 uh, and match it with any other aircraft. This is a lot of fun and I uh, hope you enjoyed it, <laughs> learned something. And uh, I'm going to get back to this because we got to put some more stuff up. So have a good day. Buh and bye. That's awesome. Very well done. That's from Robert Green. Did you like that, Jeff? <coughs> yes, I absolutely love that. Yeah. That was great. Oh, wait, hold, hold on a second. Uh, Robert did send me a second part to this video. Hold on, check this out. You know, I hate to say it, but I was almost hit. I I'm sorry, Jeff. It was a bird. <laughs> Not me, man. Hey, blame Robert Green. You blame Robert Green for that. Oh, I, I will. <laughs> Thank you very much for the news, Jeff. We very much appreciate it. You are most welcome, sir. Okay. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. <laughs> oh, poor Jeff. Poor Jeff. That he, was funny, though. <laughs> he thought he could get all the way through the news. <laughs> um.